I don't have a whole lot for you, but I do have an update on the termite situation in my garage, and I've got some advent calendar stuff to open, so let's dive right into the content. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and if you're new around here, I would love it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button down below and ringing the bell to the right of it. That's going to turn on notifications and tell YouTube that you want to be notified whenever I post a video or go live. It doesn't cost anything from you, but it means the world to me when somebody subscribes to my channel. Also, if you're not already tracking this, I am doing a Vlogmas series and I am uploading one video a day from December 1st through December 25th. And every Friday night, I go live right here on YouTube, either with a sewing project, a craft project, or sometimes just some quilty chat with some of my friends or family, because my mom likes to be on those too. <laughs> one of the things I've been doing over this Christmas season is actively transitioning our two car garage into a finished space that will serve as my ultimate quilter studio. It'll be a space where I can have a little cozy area to sit and read, a place to cut and iron my fabric, a place to sew, a place to store my stash, and of course my long arm. I can't wait for it to be finished, but it is a long process and it will likely not be finished before Christmas gets here. As with any home renovation project, we ran into a hiccup. As we were ripping drywall out and preparing the space for some massive electrical work, we found evidence in the studs and the headers and footers for some of the walls that termites have been playing around in that garage and having themselves a massive little feast. Finally today, Tuesday, December 7th, we were able to get pest control out here to take a look at the mud tubes that we found in the wood and just kind of give us their honest assessment. Before they told us what they thought, I do want to remind you of a couple things. Things. Thing number one, we had a termite inspection done when we put an offer on the home and had our home inspection done. That termite inspection came back clean. Thing number two, the day we took possession of the house and moved in, we had our pest control company come out and put in termite traps all around the perimeter of the home. And while they were doing so, we actually saw other termite traps also in the yard. So I know at some point in time, prior owners of this home have done the same thing. Personally, my gut told me that the damage in the garage was from a prior infestation, but I really wanted somebody to validate that. So the guy came out today and he started digging around a little bit and my gut was right. It does not appear to be an active infestation, thank God. It does seem to be something that happened in the past and has since been remedied, at least from an infestation point, but nobody bothered to open up the walls in the garage to see what damage they left behind. Who knows, the wood out there might actually still be plenty strong enough and you might not need to replace it. But my thought is, we're gonna have our contractor come in and take a look at the studs and the areas where the damage seems to be a little bit more profound and just assess whether or not that lumber should be replaced. We had to rip the drywall out to see what was going on anyway and put in new insulation. So while we've got that area exposed, we might as well just put in some new lumber, even if it costs us a little bit more money just because it's going to give us that peace of mind and make sure that the structure of the house, or at least garage in this case, remains sound. I'd hate to cut a corner here to find the roof or the garage collapse in on me while I'm quilting or doing a live. That would just be really weird. <laughs> while he was out here, he actually did pull some of the traps that we just laid down a little over a month ago, and he really didn't see too much activity in any of them. So we're not sure if that's just because it's cold weather and right now they're all sleeping, or if they aren't around the house and the other termite barrier still has some stuff left in them from the prior owners. Either way, there do not appear to be any termites in our walls, so thank God we're gonna move on. From here, the owner of the company that we're working with to do the garage renovation will be out here with his crew over the next couple of days just to kind of assess which pieces of wood need to be replaced and which ones are okay, and then we'll figure out what the increase in the cost is gonna be for the conversion, and he'll tell his staff what to do, and we'll go on about our merry way. 
I did get to walk the space with Mary a little bit again today, and I was really excited to do that. So we've got an idea for how everything's going to lay out in the space. We took a measuring tape out there and just kind of figured out, okay, well, the long arm's going to take up this much space. My desk is going to take up this much space. My Martelli table will be here. I have a couple armchairs over here. It's going to be really nice, and I can start to visualize it in my head. We talked through some of the lighting options, and while the lighting out there actually looks pretty good right now, it's not as bright as I want it to be. I want to be able to walk out there at midnight and flip a switch and have it bright as noon. Literally, I want a lot of light. We're still missing three of the recessed lights that haven't been installed yet, so I'm hoping that putting those three extra lights in there will increase how bright that room gets. And then we are going to move the chandelier, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, from our breakfast nook to that space. And that's a pretty bright chandelier as well, so that may add additional light to the space. We're not going to drastically change any of the plans. We want to get all of the recess lights out there and working and then make a decision about whether or not it's going to be bright enough. We'll see what happens. Today, the team was out there working on starting to frame the floor. They're doing this really cool thing. It's so amazing to watch them build the foundation for a floor. The garage floor is not even, it's sloped, which makes sense for a garage. But for my quilter studio, I want it to be nice and flat. And so they're basically flattening out the floor. They're getting beams and they're cutting it at an angle so that the top of the beam remains straight, but the underneath has that slant to it so that they can put the subfloor down and then of course the floor on top of it. And the result will be this nice, even, flat, beautiful floor. It's funny to watch them put the pieces of wood in there though, because when they get the wood in, place where it's going to be. They get their tools out and this very long screw or rod or something goes through the wood down into the concrete to make sure that the floor is really secured. It's a whole process. I am really happy we're paying somebody who knows what they're doing to do this because I know it's going to be done right. Overall, today wasn't a bad day for the quilter studio. We got some and news. Great that there's no termites in the home. Knock on wood. Hope it stays that way. Yeah, not so great that we're going to have to throw some money at the budget to take care of some wood that really probably should be replaced. Could have been worse, so I'll take it. Let's take a look at what we got for our advent calendars. I have got my Cotton Cuts package and my Missouri Star package, and I can't wait to see what we have for day eight. The Cotton Cuts package says perfectly charming, and I feel like I've said this multiple times. It feels like there's a book inside, but it really feels like there's a book inside this time. Maybe even two or three. Watch it be something like a charm pack or a set of charm packs, though. Okay, let's rip her open. Ah, it was charm packs and other things. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So let me show you down here what we got. So the first item that we have is a package of cupcake mix recipe number one. This is basically a foundation paper piece pad. Inside you have 42 pieces of paper that are all exactly the same. And the idea here is that you take one of these sheets of paper and behind it you put your two pieces of fabric right sides together and then you just sew on the dotted line starting on line number one and working your way up in sequential order and then you cut on the solid line and at the end, you're going to have all of the building blocks that you need to make these three blocks. They make these in a variety of sizes. You can use the cupcake mix recipe for charm packs, which are five inch squares, or you can use the cake mix recipe cards for 10 inch squares and a layer cake. And the same type of technology is leveraged for all of those It's So Emma foundation paper piecing pads that you can get at Fat Quarter Shop and pretty much anywhere, you know, to make your half score triangles, your flying geese, your pineapple blocks, all of them. Same concept. Of course, to go with that cupcake mix recipe, we need some fabric, right? And Cotton Cuts has done that. They have given us two charm packs, a solid and a print that we can use to put together to make some lovely blocks and turn those blocks into a little small quilt or the center of a much larger quilt that you add bigger borders onto. But you can get started with these charm packs. 
Taking a look down below, we have a Bella Solid Charm Pack. This looks like it is color number 9900PP-98. And I think the 98 is the piece that you really need to know. This just tells you that it's a Bella Solid. And to go with the Bella Solid, we have a Riley Blake Charm Pack. This is from a line called Oh Happy Day. And flipping it over to this side, you can see, there we go. You can see all of the different prints that are in this line. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the colors. I can tell this is going to be a charm pack that I really will be excited to work with. This is a line by Sandy Gervais, and I love Sandy Gervais's fabric. So I'm excited to have this charm pack. I'm excited to have a coordinating salad to go with the charm pack. And I'm excited to have a cupcake mix recipe to go with the charm pack so that I can actually do something with with it. Instant project. Yes, please. Day number eight for Missouri Star. Let's take a look. Here we have our day number eight package. I'm going to open her up. Make sure I get everything out of the bag this time. Oh, what is this? This is interesting. We have an unscented goat milk soap that is handmade in Hamilton, Missouri, and it is in the shape of a spool of thread. Take a look. This is the spool of thread soap. Really cute. This stamp, by the way, is on the bag, not on the spool of thread. It is made out of goat milk, which means the soap's going to be nice and soft and really nice for your skin. It is unscented, so if you are sensitive to scents or perfumes, then you don't have to worry. This is a soap that you can use. And I love how it's in the shape of a little spool of thread. That's super cool. They even have the detail for, like, the thread wrapped around the spool. I like this. Where would I put this? Maybe in my half bath downstairs. Day eight. Sneak peek. Luggage tag. Vlogmas day eight is in the books. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and come on back tomorrow to see what we got for day number nine. I'll see you guys all then. Bye.